please remain standing. I'll be reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 14 through 19. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 14 through 19. For Christ's love compels us, because we are convinced that one died for all, and therefore all died. And he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for he who died for them and was raised again. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone, the new is here. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. This is the word of the Lord. Please be seated. <clears throat> Thank you, Sam and Alan. Also, thank you, everyone who's assisted in, as Michelle mentioned, the church grounds, uh, but also uh, Fellowship Hall and all the cleaning that's done here in the sanctuary. I'm so blessed that this is a church that serves. Amen. And uh, when Sam would come back and forth from the Middle East where he was working, he would always tell us about the wonderful experiences he had in the United Arab Emirates in a hotel he would stay there. Today's story comes from UAE. February 28, 2024. Dubai, United Arab Emirates, AP. Pilots lined up on a runway in Dubai on Wednesday and fired up their seven jet engines with an earth-splittering roar, but they weren't preparing to fly an airplane. They were the aircraft. This city-state in the United Arab Emirates, known for being home to the world's largest building and other wonders, hosted what is called the first-ever jet suit race. Racers zipped along a route with the skyscrapers of Dubai. Marina looming before them, controlling the jet engines on their hands and on their backs. And it sounds as if Iron Man from the Marvel comics has come to life. What we had thought was fiction with Robert Downey Jr. is now fact. All these things that I've seen in comic books and science fiction movies are becoming fact before my eyes. This closest analogy would be that the dream of flying and then go wherever your mind is taking you, said Richard Browning, the father, founder, and chief test pilot for Gravity Industries, the firm that put on the race. And yes, the world of Marvel superheroes and DC Comics, they have created that dream book with CGI, and we've got the closest I think anyone will ever come on delivering that for real. The races on Wednesday saw pilots wear 1,500 horsepower jet suits. And I thought a Ferrari had some horsepower. More powerful than most luxury sports cars, and using the same kind of fuel as used by Dubai's long-haul carrier Airbus A380s and Boeing 777 aircraft. Pilots lined up on the runway used at the marina by Skydive, the thrill-seeking firm associated with the Sheikdom's Crown Prince, with some parachutists coming down as they prepared their jetpacks. Then came 
what pilot Issa Kafan referred to as the moment of truth. The engines roared, the pilots jumped, and they leaned forward. And like a helicopter takes off, so too did the pilots as they sped around obstacles in a water channel near the site. Organizers said they picked the water site to allow for higher speeds and for safety as they skim a short distance above the water. The jet suit can currently keep reach speeds of 80 miles per hour, gravity says. The pilots do pick up speed during their heats with two jumping into each other, but remaining into the air as the crowd was astonished. Now, that's pretty impressive, people flying in the air and skimming above the water. Except, Jesus did it first. Jesus walked on water and rose in the air in his ascension long before. Elijah, with the chariot of fire, bringing him to heaven long before. Christ died that we might live through him and for him and that we might live with him. Who died for us, that whether we wake up or sleep, we will live together with him. 1 Thessalonians 5.10 because of Calvary, believers are going to heaven to live with Christ forever. We're continuing our Lenten series uh, on the various R words where we've looked at repentance. We also are heading towards Resurrection Sunday, or what some would call Easter. And today we're looking at the renewal that we have through Christ. And I did not expect what happened yesterday to be part of my sermon. But one of the greatest instances of Christ's renewal I've ever seen in my life happened yesterday. Uh, a gentleman from Lampasas who now lives and ministers in San Antonio came back to Lampasas for an evangelistic service in one of our city parks where they have all those statues. And he brought with him several people who had lived lives uh, of hopelessness due to drugs, who had gone to prison, who had been drug dealers themselves, uh, who each day did not see any hope at all, who had had broken homes, who had lost custody of their children, including some that were from here in Land Passes. And to the outside world, these people were ex-cons. But to us, these people were believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, who overcame what had been holding them down, the sin that had constrained them, that kept them homeless or kept them in prison. Why? Because of the life-giving gospel message of Jesus Christ. Miracles did not just happen in Scripture. Miracles are happening every day around us. No one is too far from Jesus to come home. And all of us, before we knew Jesus, we're dead in our sins and trespasses. Each of us, having different sins, but all of us sinning before a holy God. But Jesus did not stay on the cross. Jesus did not stay on the tomb. Jesus rose triumphantly as the Easter hymns proclaim and as the Easter praise music proclaims. And the great thing is, is that we share in his new creation. The passage I read in 2 Corinthians about our new relationship in Christ. Why did a scholar on the Sanhedrin, when he came to Jesus asking him questions, did Jesus tell him, you must be born again? Because whether you are a religious scholar or whether you are a heroin addict, 
You need new birth. You need renewal that comes only from Jesus. Paul talks about us taking off our old clothes and wearing a new cloak of righteousness. We have gone from darkness into light. We are born again. We will be with Jesus forever in new resurrection bodies. Our lives that live to please ourselves. We now have been freed from our shackles to live for Christ. And even when we thought that we were free, that we were the masters of our own destiny, we weren't. But now, our new master, God, does not consider us just as servants, but has adopted us into his family. We're not just new creations, we're part of a new family adopted by God. And you know what the beautiful thing is? An adoption someone chooses to bring you into their family. It was God's sovereign choice that if we accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior, that we would cross from death to life. That we would be part of the family of God with the worldwide church of Jesus. 2,000 years of disciples of followers following their Lord. And it's just as new today as it was when Jesus died on the cross. Christianity is not an old religion. Christianity is ever new. Christianity is not a faith based on a blind leap in the dark. Christianity is based upon Jesus being born in history, living in history, Dying in history, rising from the grave in history, appearing to hundreds of witnesses, and then rising into the air, who now intercedes or prays for us. This is the most exciting news that anyone can ever hear. How beautiful are the feet of those who share the gospel with other people. Nothing is more beautiful in this world. But the days of the flesh have ended. We read this in Hebrews chapter 5 verse 7. We lived futilely. We lived without person, purpose. We lived chaotically. But now we have faith in Jesus. Who has ascended to heaven is now glorified at the right hand of the Father. And we too... Once we cross the river Jordan, once the roll is crawled up yonder, once we are asleep, we will rise in newness, in new resurrection bodies. We'll be glorified as Christ glorifies us and has prepared a place for us. I know so many people, including myself, whose vision is getting worse every year. And the bad thing about vision is mine's not going to get any better. But when I'm in heaven with a new resurrection body, it's either going to be 2020 or it's going to be even better. All those parts of us that have been replaced will no longer need that. We'll no longer need walkers. We will no longer need carts. We'll no longer need railing. Because we will be new. The old creation was plunged into sin and condemnation because of the disobedience of Adam. In Adam, we sinned all. But a second Adam was born. The second Adam, Jesus, perfectly obeying the Father so that he could take our place. He bore our iniquities. He bore our disobedience upon his back on the cross. But now he lives for us. Because we're part of that new creation, everything is new. And I don't know about you, but when I go into the grocery store, the convenience store, and I see a new flavor of Bluebell, I'm just happy. 
You know, when you put Dr. Pepper and Bluebell together, you get something new and exciting. Many of the students at the school like hot Cheetos. You take something that sets your mouth on fire, put it with a crunchy, delicious, cheesy snack, hot Cheetos. Over and over, we see new vehicles. We see new inventions. More and more jobs now are either being replaced by AI or being assisted by AI. But the real newness that's coming comes only from God, who no longer sees us as enemies, but now sees us as friends. God demonstrated his love for us, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Rarely would someone die for a good man, but Jesus died when we weren't. The new creation is described in 5.17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has gone. The new has come. I don't know about y'all, but my dog wrecks his chew toys. And my dog before that, she wrecked her chew toys. You want to see something that's in bad shape, look at my dog taking one of those rope toys and separating the rope from the toy. I have to get a new one. And whenever I get a new one, my new dog is really excited. So my dog grabs it and tears it up. The old has gone, which has been chewed on, is ragged, is smelly. The new has come. Each year, marvelous and odd inventions are released as products. Parents' lives have gotten a whole lot easier thanks to a tech company, Glukin. I just enjoy saying Lukin. Hopefully I'm pronouncing Lukin correctly. I hope I'm kind to Lukin if I say it right. They invented the Ella self-driving stroller. There's now a robot stroller. A hands-free motorized buggy with built-in sensors that can detect incoming obstacles to ensure the baby's safety. Just like if you've seen The Mandalorian with Baby Yoda, he had one of those things. Now it's fact. It can even drive itself without the baby strapped in so it can follow parents along if the parents decide they'd rather carry their child. It will stop automatically if any obstacles are in the way as it has cameras built in that are designed to track moving images like people, bikes, and much more. It has built-in sounds and flashing lights. So it can alert parents when a danger is present. The Japanese robotics firm, Yukai Engineering, hopefully I pronounced that correctly. My Japanese is terrible. I know about three words in Japan, Ichi Nisan, one, two, three, has invented an incredible pillow that feels like it's breathing when you hold it. You can have a breathing pillow if you want one. It does this by expanding and contracting slowly and subtly as you are holding it, which helps train your body to do the same. As you hold the gently breathing pillow, you gently breathe yourself. We even have pillows that teach you how to correctly breathe. And this can calm you and give you a feeling of peace. True peace doesn't come from a pillow. It comes from Jesus. To understand the new creation, first we must grasp that that is in fact a creation. Something created by <coughs> God. We did not inherit the new nature from our parents or decide to recreate ourselves anew. Just because a baby is born in a garage does not make it a car. We don't get our faith from our family. We get our faith from Jesus. By the way, we don't get our faith from the saints or Mary either. We get our faith from Jesus. Neither did God simply clean up our old nature. He creates something entirely fresh and unique. The new creation is completely new, brought about from nothing. 
Just as the whole universe was created by God, ex nihilo, God created the universe from nothing. There was nothing. And then everything we see was created by God. Second, old things have passed away. The old referring to everything that was part of our old nature. Natural pride, love of sin, reliance on works, and our former opinions, habits, and passions. By the way, in the church age, or this present age, or living now, we're being sanctified, made holy, we're being discipled. So some of that old nature is still clinging to us. We still have a battle every day to be more holy. But once we cross that river, once we are on that golden shore, that battle with sin and death will be no more. We'll be glorified like Christ. Most significantly, what we loved has passed away, especially the extreme love of self, and with it, self-righteousness, self-promotion, and self-justification. In other words, we, don't, we no longer self-promote ourselves like politicians who promise everything and deliver very little. The new creature looks outwardly towards Christ instead of inwardly towards self. The old things die, nailed to the cross with our sin nature. Also, why is it every time I buy a product or a service, there's 30 pages in fine print telling me about how the company can take advantage of me? One time, Deanne and I signed a contract, and we called up the company, and we said he violated the contract. And the company said the contract says we can change it any time we want. That's not what God is like. The whole face of nature seems to us to be changed, and we seem to be in a new world. The heavens and earth are filled with new wonders, and all things seem now to speak forth the praise of God. I don't know about you, there are many days when I see the sun rise and see the beautiful hill country that I praise God and had it in His creation. And in those old westerns, when you have the sun setting in the desert, you get to see its beauty. By the way, I have a bone to pick with movies and TV shows. Here's what my bone to pick is. Don't say a movie or TV show is in Texas, in somewhere that has no desert, and you're doing your filming in New Mexico and Arizona. The end gets mad, and I got frustrated. There's this show called Austin 911, where it showed them moving from New York to Austin. By the way, they traveled through some rugged mountains in Texas. Huh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. This stuff is made in New York City. New York City, get a rope. The old paste commercial. Not that I have... That much against New York. I uh, have more against the uh, Patriots, the uh, 49ers, the Packers, the Eagles. You can't tell I'm a Cowboys fan who's frustrated 27 years of not making it to the Super Bowl. We have put off the old man with his old deeds, Colossians 3.9, have put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness, Ephesians 424. Throughout the Bible we read that a new thing has come. Our new self hates the sin that still has a hold on us. The difference is the new creation is no longer a slave to sin. We choose which God we serve. And we count ourselves dead to sin but alive in Christ Jesus. Romans 6, 11-12 Thus of all, we now have the choice to choose to follow God. And by the way, even when we make bad decisions, God's love and mercy and grace are still there. Love lifted me. The new creation is a wonderful thing formed in the mind of God, created for his power and his glory. Now we live to the glory of God, and to him be all praise forever. Amen. Scientists 
have revealed a new, remarkably complete fossil, a 16-foot long aquatic reptile from the Triassic period. The creature has been dubbed a dragon because of its extremely long neck. This new fossil that was discovered, the neck of this creature is longer than its body and its tail. That's why they've called it the dragon. Now, it has a long name beginning in dino that I cannot pronounce. So it's the something, 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 a sword. Just trying to help y'all out with my scientific knowledge. It has flipper-like limbs, and its neck is larger than its body and tail combined. The researchers speculated that a long, bendy, and flexible neck with, a, with 32 separate vertebrae in the neck might have provided a hunting advantage, allowing the dinosaur to search for food in crevices under the water. The fossil was discovered in ancient limestone deposits in China. According to Dr. Fraser, in his interview with BBC News, the discovery just adds to the wilderness of the Triassic. And every time we look at these deposits, we find something new. Every day with the Christian, we find something new in God, our Lord and Savior. So, this is part of the sermon where I like to ask questions, so what? In other words, how do we apply this to our lives? It's wonderful that you told me about all this wonderful stuff. Now, how do I do it? Elizabeth Elliot had something really interesting to say, by the way. Uh, the wife of Jim Elliot, who gave his life as a uh, missionary. And then Elizabeth Elliot went on to become an excellent author and speaker. She said, I do what you told me to. Do the next right thing. If I try to think about everything, it just weighs me down. Do the next right thing. You're new in Jesus. Keep doing the next right thing. Recognize that you are in Christ. Your identity is in Christ. When you think of yourself, the first thing to think about is, I am in Jesus, and I have all these manifold blessings, because I am a new creation in Christ. Believe it. Hold on to your faith, no matter what's happening. No matter what's happening to your body, your relationships, or your account, God is in control and is holding your hand. We need to throw away our old life each day. Think about practical ways that we can avoid certain situations, certain people, so that we can focus on what God has called us here to do. Of course, stop sinning. We won't completely stop sinning, but part of confession and repentance, which I preached about recently, is we confess the sin, and then we move on. Let the Holy Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. It's not up to us. We live in the power of the Holy Spirit. We're the temple of the Holy Spirit. We're spirit-filled people. Put on your new, your new nature. Take action. Move forward. God loves you. Live in line with God's word. How do we live in line with God's word? We read it, and then we do it. Christianity can be made to be really complicated. But if we love people, we love God, we pray, we read the Bible, we praise God, we spend time with others, we tell other people about Jesus, that's what God wants us to do. A lot of people ask this question, what's God's will for my life? Well, read the Bible. God's will is not as complicated as some people make it out to be. We pray, we move forward, we love others, and God will use us, and God will use the people around us, and God will give us people and situations to pray for. So this week, think about it. what's one thing you can change? What's one new habit you can pick up?
Please join me for a moment of silence. I just want to give you a time to think about what the Holy Spirit has laid on your heart. And now for one of my favorite parts of the service, the benediction. We are his new creation built upon Christ, the cornerstone and foundation, created in him for good works. Let us now walk in them. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.